In this example, I want to conduct a, or actually uh, create a confidence interval for proportions. And I'm going to use an acronym called PANIC to go through the process. I've done a couple of confidence intervals for proportion videos before this one. But this time I'm going to use PANIC, um, which is a common acronym that you can use to help remember what you should do to, to do a, uh, to create a confidence interval for proportions. Really for any confidence interval you can use this, uh, this acronym PANIC. P stands for parameter statements. So we're going to state what we're trying to do right at the beginning because we are using a sample to predict or to estimate a parameter. So that's why uh, we're going to tell everybody what we're going to try and estimate in our parameter statement. A stands for assumptions and conditions and depending on whether you're finding a confidence interval for proportions or means or something else you need to check some assumptions and conditions. N is just name the confidence interval that you're going to create. I stands for interval, that's where you actually do the math, and C is your conclusion, and your conclusion should always follow the same pattern for just about any confidence interval. So let's go ahead and get started with this and uh, read our example and then go through panic to create our confidence interval, and in this case, remember, we are dealing with proportions. If it was means, things would be slightly different, but, but they would follow the same pattern using panic. Here we go. An experiment finds that 27% of 53 subjects reports improvement after using a new medicine. Create a 95% confidence interval for the actual cure rate. Well, we don't know what the actual cure rate is. That's why we're creating a confidence interval. That's the purpose of creating confidence intervals. We find a sample, which we have right here, 27% of 53 subjects, and we are going to use that sample to make a prediction about the actual cure rate, and that prediction is called a confidence interval. So here we go. P is my parameter statement. I'm going to do some typing on this. It's a, it's, it's a little bit easier for me to type these in than it is to write it in, and you could probably see it a little bit easier as well. <clears throat> P stands for um, parameter statement. There we go. Oh, got the wrong. Let me choose a different uh, font here so it's a little bit easier to see. See, that'll work there. Um, I want to create a confidence interval, I'll abbreviate, for the actual cure rate of this new medicine. <clears throat> so now I'm ready to go to A, my assumptions and conditions. There are a number of different assumptions and conditions that we should check depending on the type of confidence interval, but for um, confidence intervals for proportions, the first one we want to check is plausible independence. And in this case, we could say that one patient is, hmm, let's say this, one patient responding to the medicine is independent of the response of the other patients. Okay. The next assumption that we should check is <clears throat> the random sampling condition. So let me go ahead and give myself a little bit more space here. Come back up here. So randomization. The sample was collected randomly. After that, we've got our 10% condition. And we can say that, what was it, 53? Yeah, 53 responses is less than 10% of all the possible responses. Now keep in mind, in that case, we're not really testing the people. We're testing the medicine and their response to the medicine. So 
the 10% condition might not really have to be applied to this, but we'll go ahead and state that. Um, I, we would hope that they eventually would give this medicine to more than 530 people, so that the 10% condition is uh, satisfied. The last one is success failure condition, and we need to make sure that we have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. Now this one I'll do, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and write out. We need to check n times p, which is equal to 53 times 0.27, and then that is going to give us 14, so that's greater than 10, which is what we're looking for. And we also need to check n times q, which is 53, times 0.73, which is n, there we go, which is equal to 39, and that is definitely greater than 10, so that one checks out. So our success failure condition has been satisfied as well. All right, so we've got our P, which is our parameter statement. We've checked our assumptions and conditions, and we're in good shape. Now we go to N, which is name the test, or name the, the um, in this case, the interval that we are going to create. So since, let's see here, N, since the assumptions and conditions have been met, I will create, in this case, I'm creating a one proportion Z interval. Okay, I'm telling the reader two things here. One, that this is a proportion, and two, that I'm using a Z interval or a normal model for this. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and create it. So now that I get to I, which stands for the interval itself, I need this formula. This is the formula for creating a confidence interval for proportions. If you notice, I'm going to take my sample proportion right here. I'm going to multiply, I'm going to add and subtract, add to it and subtract from it. This part right here, the Z, this Z star times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. This is called the margin of error. And the margin of error is always made up of a critical value. Okay, right here, this is a critical value. And this part is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So in this case, the standard deviation of P hat. So I need to go ahead and fill in all the blanks. Well, one thing um, that you'll find out, I, I'm kind of skipping over a couple of things because you should be able to find this Z star, this critical value. Um, there are some common ones out there. Uh, if your confidence level is 90% or 95% or 99%, there are some very common critical values that go along with Z. And the critical values that go with these would be, let's see, for 90 it would be 1.645. For a 95% confidence interval, it is 1.96. And for 99% confidence, confidence interval, it's 2.5. 76. Now you've got to be careful because these critical values are true for a Z interval if I'm using a normal model. If for some reason I'm, I'm finding a confidence interval for means, this Z is going to turn into a T and we use a different kind of distribution. So in this case, I think in the original question up here at the top, yes, it said create a 95% confidence interval. And since I'm working with a Z interval at this point, I am going to use a critical value of 1.96. So let me go ahead and plug everything into my equation. P hat is my sample proportion, and that is 27%. So let's bring this back down. Here we go. 0.27 plus or minus my critical value, which is 1.96, times the square root of P hat times Q hat over N. P hat is 0.27. 
and q hat, p plus q always has to equal 1, so q hat has to be 0.73, and I divide that by my sample size, and my sample size was 53. Now I'm not going to do the math, I trust that you can do the math here, but what I end up getting is, let's see, 0.27 plus or minus um, point, or oh, nope, let me do the math here, 1.69 times 0.061. I just said I wasn't going to do the math and now I'm doing it, but here we go. When I do the addition and subtraction here, I end up getting 0.15 as my lower end of my interval, and 0.39 as the upper end of my interval. Let me make this look more like a point. There we go, 0.39. So I have found my interval. This right here is I, the interval itself, right there, 0.15 and 0.39. But that doesn't mean anything unless I define it or unless I draw a conclusion. So I'm going to come to my last step, which is, a, which is C, which stands for conclusion. And your conclusion should always include, for a confidence interval, three things. The confidence level, the confidence interval, and the context of the problem. So let me type it out here. We are 95% confident that between 15% and 39% of people will improve after using the new medication. And there it is. And again, I want to point out here that there's three parts to this. There's the confidence level, there's the confidence interval, and there's the context itself. Whenever you write a confident, uh, your conclusion for a confidence interval, it will almost always look something like this. So this is just one example of how to create a confidence interval for a proportion using panic. Um, Hopefully this has helped you, and uh, just keep watching these videos. I hope that they continue to help. I've been getting some good comments from a lot of people, um, and uh, have fun in your stats class.